Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover a cookie consent banner. This is just going to be a simple pop-up that tells you, hey, we use cookies, and then you can either accept or reject that, and it'll store your choice so you can use it whenever you want to like run any other cookie stuff. Uh, so to get started, we're just going to create a new Rails project. We're going to say Rails new. I'm going to call mine video. I'm going to give it a dash J for ES build. So we're going to be using ES build instead of import maps. And I'm going to give it a dash C for uh, bootstrap because we're going to be using bootstrap for the CSS styling. In terms of that, I do have a link in the video description to the Bootstrap 5 documentation where they have an existing modal that we'll be using just because you don't want to see me try and style something like this. So this modal, if you click on it, it'll just pop something up. You can then hit close or save changes and we'll use that to have a accept or a decline. And then we'll have a link to a cookie policy page in, in the event that you actually create like a cookie policy for your website. So all of that'll work. It'll then store it in the session. And then you could use that for like, if you're doing Google analytics or something, you can just do a check to say, uh, hey, do I have the ability to, to use cookies that track? And then in that case, you can then run your Google Analytics code if you so desire. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in VS Code so that you can see what the code looks like without needing to go to Stack Overflow to figure out how to exit Vim. I'm gonna bump up the font size a bit and I'm gonna full screen my notes on my other screen. Uh, and yes, I am using notes because I don't know what I'm doing off the top of my head. I'm not a wizard. And we can go ahead and get started. So the first couple things we want to do is create a uh, controller for our homepage. So we're going to say Rails G controller pages home. That'll be our homepage. The next thing we want to do is a Rails G controller. We're going to call this one the cookies controller. We'll give it a index page and we'll give it a policy page. Now you can name these whatever you'd like. The index page will be the actual cookie banner we display. The policy page will be the uh, page where you just have your, your, your cookie policy. Now, because we're using ES build for this, we're gonna have to run bin slash dev whenever we wanna do anything. So this does need to be running, otherwise you won't get updates to your CSS or your JS. Uh, that's just the way this works. So you can see here is the cookie banner. I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh. We'll get sent to the basic Rails starter page. Now we can come into our routes.rb and we can configure these a little bit. Now for our cookie policy, I'll put this one at the top for right now. Our cookie policy is gonna be uh, increased in font size a bit. And one more time, our cookie policy is gonna go to the cookies policy action, and then it'll just be as cookie policy, uh, as cookie policy. Uh, this is just coming from whatever GitHub Copilot generated for me in my notes. Then we have our cookies index, which should be right down here, actually. Let me just get rid of this. So we have our git cookies slash index. We don't need the slash index. And instead, we'll just say this needs to go to the cookies controller and the index action. In the same vein, we're going to change the git to a root and the slash to a hash for our home action. And then we need one more for our cookies up here, which is going to be a post to the cookies slash consent action, which we have to make. This is gonna to go to the cookies controller consent action. And then this will be as cookie underscore consent. So that's just our actions here in terms of the policy page, the rendering of the partial and the actual consent page. If we come up to our app controllers and our cookies controller, we have our uh, policy page, our index page, and we just want to do one more, which is going to be our consent page. And remember, you should always ask for consent, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to have like the consent check, then we'll have some params that are like our consent. And then if this is equal to true, then we want to uh, store in variable. And then wherever else in our website, we can do a check for like, should we track everything question mark? And then if, if our params consent is equal to true, then yes, is effectively how we're gonna be doing this. 
So we just need to implement this logic. And then after we're done with this, we want to do something like uh, remove the cookie banner or people will think it no work, which to be fair, it wouldn't work in that case. So this is our three step process to success here that we're going to be following. So I'll just go ahead and put this into some comments and hopefully forget these are here, commit this to my GitHub repo and then get fired in the future when people find out that this is what my, uh, repositories look like. So to get started, we'll come into our pages and our application.html.erb file because that's gonna be where we start. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a turbo frame tag for the cookie consent. And then if we give it a source, which you can find on the turbo frame consent, oops, turbo frame frames helper GitHub page, found this earlier. Uh, in here, you can see that you can give it a source with a path, which will then just grab the entire view if there's a turbo frame tag in it. So we can do a SRC, we'll give this the cookies path, and then we can eventually add in the check for the session. For now, we'll just do this. We come over here and we refresh. Uh, it should take us to this page, but then we'll get stuck in an infinite loop. So we probably wanna fix that. So let's come into our cookies index page and stop the server real quick. In our cookies index page, what we want to do is wrap this entire thing inside of a turbo frame tag that is going to be called cookie consent. We then have our do block and then we have our end block right here. We can then go ahead and run our bin dev again and refresh the page. We'll leave the cookies page for now because you can see a double rendering. You can see now we have our home page and then we have this uh, cookies index page. We can also go to our cookies slash policy page and you'll see here that we're on the policy page but the index is still being rendered. So this is where we're gonna put our actual banner. So to create the actual banner, uh, oops, we want to come over to the bootstrap modal page, which is going to be this one right here. Uh, again, I'll have a link to this in the video description and we'll just go ahead and we'll copy this. We can then come down here and we can replace the contents of this index with that modal. I'm just going to go ahead and save that, come back over to the home page of our application, refresh. And now we have this button. If we click on it, a modal pops up. So that's pretty neat. The buttons do work. Save changes doesn't do anything, of course, but we can at least close out of it. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, I guess, copy and paste some code. I'll try and copy and paste it line by line so that you can see what I'm doing here. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a, uh, I guess, a thing, a div with a class of footer. Inside of this footer, I'm gonna clear, create a class with, I think, card is what I had. Inside of that card, I'm gonna do a dot card dash body and then a dot row, which will give us two different classes. Inside of that, we'll have a dot call. Inside of that dot call, we'll have a P with a dot text dash center. This is the Emmet tab complete if you're wondering how I'm doing this or trigger expansion with tab, you can find it in the settings of VS Code. And then in here, I'll just say this website uses cookies or something. So what does this do specifically? If we come over here and we refresh, our little card thingy here says that this website uses cookies. So that's pretty neat, but now our button is mispositioned. So the way to fix that is below this one call, we'll create another call. Inside of this call, we'll grab this button, paste it up here. Now if we, oops, now if we refresh, you'll see this is inside of our little uh, configuration thing here. Next thing we want to do is on our button, we want to add the class for float end. And then if we save this and refresh, now that's pushed over to the side. Now, of course, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, the next thing we want to do is come into our assets, style sheets, application dot sas file. And here we just want to do a dot footer. And then in here we want to do a position of fixed, a height of 100 pixels a bottom of zero pixels, a width of 50%, and a margin dash left of 25%. Save that. And there we go. So now we have this little cookie banner that if we zoom out all the way, it looks a little bit like this. So this website uses cookies, and then we have our little pop-up. So let's add some text to that pop-up. Inside of our uh, index page here, we can come down and instead of having this uh, launch demo modal button, we'll just make this say learn more. 
We can then come down to our actual uh, modal body right here. And in here, what we're gonna do is, let me just grab this text real quick. We'll replace the dot, dot, dot with some text that says this website uses cookies. You can check out our cookie policy. And then we'll just put in a link that says, you can check out our cookie policy link to here, which will be the cookie policy path with a target of underscore blank. And we'll save that. And then if we exit out of here and refresh, if we click on this, you'll see this website uses cookies. You can check out our cookie policy here. If we click on that, because it has the underscore blank in the target, uh, that causes it to open up a new tab. And then in here, you could just copy and paste whatever cookie policy you find on the internet or whatever. But just make sure you actually do whatever the policy says. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is we want to make these buttons actually do stuff. Now this part can be a little bit tricky because I did have to use a little bit of JavaScript to make this work. Now the way that I did this is I got rid of this entire close and save buttons right here. And instead I have a button to reject. And then we have a button to accept. And then we'll just go ahead and we can probably do both at the same time. So I'll hit Alt and I'll just do both. Now they both go to a cookie consent path where they take in a consent colon and one of these is gonna be false. It's gonna be the reject one. The other one's gonna be true. Now the next thing we have to do is a comma method colon colon post. And then I believe we need to give the reject one a class of button secondary. And what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna hit enter, I'll hit enter, I'll tab these over, I'll hit enter. And then after the secondary is where we have our on click. So we'll just hit comma. On click is gonna be a function that we just call hide modal, just like that. And then we can do the same thing for our accept. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste my accept method from my other screen and move this all over like this and tab this over. So the only real difference here is the reject one has a class of secondary, which makes it a gray button. And the accept one has a class of primary, which makes it a blue button. And then the consent Boolean is either true or false. Now we do need to actually create this hide modal uh, function. And for this, you can really put this wherever you'd like. You can generate a stimulus controller if you so desire. I'm just gonna create some script tags real quick. And then in these script tags, I'm just gonna create a quick little hide modal function. And I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this because it's not really that interesting to see me type it out. So the way that this function works is it's just a basic JavaScript function, no jQuery here, because it is once again, just a very simple implementation. We don't need a whole library for that. We start by creating a variable called consent modal. We do a document dot get element by ID where we grab the example modal, which is just the ID that comes straight from bootstrap. Uh, if you wanna change your ID here, just make sure you change the ID you're selecting in your hide function. Then we check if that uh, element exists. If it does, we grab the bootstrap.modal.get instance for the consent modal and we call modal to hide. And the reason why we do this is because without this, when you click close and it goes to that different link, it won't redirect you, but your screen will stay gray and it's really annoying and really cringe. So this way it just all goes away. So we can go ahead and we can save this. Let's come over to our page here and refresh. I'm gonna click learn more. We're gonna clear our console just so we can see anything happen. I'll click reject. This starts a post request to cookies consent with consent set to false, goes through all of this and then nothing really happens. Now let's go ahead and let's come into our cookies controller because now we wanna actually make this do something. Inside of our cookies controller, the first thing we're gonna do is set the params just like we said. This will be our session cookie underscore consent is equal to, and then whatever we had, we called this our consent parameter, which is either true or false. And we can just say, if this has a presence, then uh, we'll store it in our session. So if this exists, it'll go into the session. The second thing we wanna do is we don't have this tracking thing here because we're sort of, uh, we're just doing it like a two-step process here. I don't have like Google Analytics installed or anything. But the second thing we wanna do is a render to turbo stream where we wanna do a turbo stream dot remove. 
and then cookie underscore consent. And I don't remember if this right here is gonna cause you to need a uh, Redis running, but if you do, and you don't have a uh, PSOX, GREP, Redis, you don't have a Redis server running, what you can do is you can type Redis dash server space dash dash D-A-E-M-O-N-I-Z-E -E for daemonize and then yes, and that should cause it to run in the background, assuming you have Redis installed. If you don't have it installed, then you'll wanna run like a sudo apt install Redis or something. Okay, so that's all of that out of the way. Now we can go ahead and start the server again. Now, of course, I think Redis might even get bundled with Rails now, I don't know, but whatever. So this will cause the turbo stream to replace it like that. The last thing we have to do is come into our application.html.erb file, because in here we're rendering this con uh, cookie consent, but we wanna make sure that we only do this if our session cookie consent is set to nil because in the cookies controller, if we either set it to true or false, this now exists, which means in here it exists. And if it exists, it means we've either accepted or rejected the cookie consent, in which case we shouldn't see the cookie consent banner again. So let's go ahead and save this, come over here and refresh the page. We'll click learn more, blah, 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 accept or reject. Let's try reject. We get rid of that, but our JavaScript function isn't firing. So let's come over to our JavaScript uh, or to our index.html.erb file. And let's see why the JavaScript function isn't firing. Okay, we can see right here, bootstrap is not defined. So the only other thing we really need to do is come into our, uh, wherever it is, our JavaScript application. And in here, what we can do is we can just say something like window.bootstrap equals bootstrap. Save that, come over here and refresh. Oops, and then we'll have to clear our cookies. So we'll come in here, remove cookies, done. Hit refresh, learn more, reject. And now everything is working as expected uh, because now we have access to this bootstrap variable. There's of course cleaner ways to do this. It's just in this case, I just said whatever, it doesn't matter. So there you go. Oops, wow, that was blinding. We can now uh, clear our cookies one more time, hit remove, hit done, and then refresh. We can hit learn more. We can click here. That takes us to this page. We can then hit accept and we should be good. So what we can do now is on our index page, oops, not our index page, on our home page, we can just say something like, okay, we're on the home page and uh, you have accepted cookies and then we'll just do our session where we grab whatever we called it. I think it was like cookie underscore consent. Save that, refresh. Uh, you have accepted cookies. It didn't like that because this needs to not be like that. Let me just check our cookies controller real quick. It is the session cookie consent. That makes sense. Refresh. So we have accepted cookies. Let me come in here, cookies and remove, refresh. It's now blank. Let me hit reject, refresh. It's now set to false. So there you go. So now anywhere in your application, you just check this and make sure that this is either true or false. And then you only use cookies if it's set to true, for example. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful and interesting. I tried to include some additional topics like bootstrap and ES build and uh, I don't know, turbo frames or whatever. Uh, but this is sort of a follow-up to a previous video where we talked about like cookie consent banners and how no one ever actually makes them work and uh, like how you do a privacy policy, etc. So uh, yeah, hopefully this is helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.